Version 3.1 of Darktable has a new module to work with film negatives. It was built by someone named Aurelien Pierre. I'll put a link to one of his videos in the description. I thought I'd try it out to see if it would work for someone who already has a scanner in their workflow, like I do. Using ViewScan and my Epson V600, I produced three different versions of the same image. Uh, one was the negative raw scan. The second is a raw inverted scan that was inverted by ViewScan. So what we're viewing is a positive. And the third, uh, the image was scanned as a positive. So that's another way of getting a negative image without having to scan raw as a raw DNG if you didn't want to. And I've also done the same for a black and white image so we can compare color and black and white and see how they work. The first thing to do with a negative scan is to select the color of your film base. If you select the eyedropper tool, you'll be able to go over to the image and pick an area that's outside of your frame where just the film base is. And after that, you can use the controls just below the eyedropper to tweak. In the next tab, there are controls for white balance and for shadow detail. It does seem to take a while to get the image to a neutral color space where you can then tweak it in other areas in Darktable. The next image, view scan inverted during the scanning process. And we start off with something that's a little easier to uh, fine tune from the outset. The initial result seems to be less muddy in the shadow detail, especially towards the back of the image where the tree line is. Next is a scan of the negative as a positive. So we have a slightly different look to the, the image. It, um, it's something that I wouldn't mind exploring a little more in the future as it, it gives a, a very specific look to the image. Um, it does require more tweaking, but I'm not sure how else you would duplicate the look. This method also seems to have a little less latitude where exposure is concerned, which is probably a byproduct of it being uh, scanned as a positive image. You can reset these adjustment tabs by clicking on the color palette and selecting white. This loose experiment really makes it clear to me, at least with color negative, that my current workflow with a flatbed scanner and view scan is actually working better for me. Uh, this requires a bit too much work and fine tuning for a result that's not consistent. Bearing in mind, of course, that my current color workflow does need a bit of tweaking on the scanner software side. It would be interesting to see this with a DSLR as the scanner, uh, as a lot of people do. I think it would work a lot better. And now onto the black and white image which I chose because it has a bit of a hot spot on the subject's face, and I was curious to see if there was a way to work with it. And right out of the gate, it seems to be really close to where we would want it to be as a final image. And the hot spot itself isn't actually peaking, so there, there's no overage there at all. When you select in black and white, um, as opposed to color negative, uh, some of the tools go away. They are really the ones to work with um, the color film base. Next is ViewScan's inversion, and it's not actually a usable image, as there are multiple areas that are blown out. I'm going to try to work a little bit with the positive scan to see if we can bring some of the blown out areas back under control. And it doesn't look like that's really going to work, so uh, as a last ditch we're going to try an exposure mask just to see if we can make it usable. 
but it doesn't look like it's going to work out. What this does mean, though, is that it's quite possible for this module to be used with um, raw negative black and white scans, and it would work quite well. There was definitely a lot more exposure latitude. I may do another video where we look at black and white film that's actually color stock that's been cross-processed and manipulate the film using the color controls. Thanks for watching.